نحمده ونسلم ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Oh, praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this, uh, the creator of this entire cosmos. And may the choicest blessings be upon his beloved Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim. We continue with these videos on zakat and we uh, looked at the intention or making intention for paying zakat. And uh, you know, we uh, established the importance within sharia. Of, of establishing intention with respect to paying zakat so much so that if you don't have the correct intention it would only count as sadqa lillah a charity which is not ob uh, obligatory according to that which is established according to the faqih and the fuqaha and the scholars of fiqh so today uh, we're going to look at um, who needs to give uh, uh, so, so the different classes of people uh, that you are allowed uh, to give zakat to and also uh, the different classes of people who need to pay zakat or make this payment of zakat. So, upon whom is zakat obligatory? So, we'll look at the different classes uh, with respect to this, inshallah, disease. And we'll also uh, touch upon, uh, you know, the nisab level and what it is in a little bit more detail, inshallah, disease. Okay, so just beginning with uh, with respect to who needs to pay uh, uh, zakat. All right, zakat is obligatory upon uh, every Muslim. Okay, uh, first. Uh, condition according to the books of fiqh that this person must be sane okay so you must have sanity you must have yeah, sort of your uh, you know you know your mental faculties must be there um, you must be an adult all right uh, if, if you're um, a child and you haven't reached the age of majority then zakat isn't payable by you you know even though uh, you know in history uh, you know, the, according to the ulama they used to say that even children who own beyond the nisab level, you know, for the, for the sake of barakah and for the sake of putting them into a good routine. They would, you know, they would promote, they would, they would sort of uh, um, uh, promote them and they would encourage them to pay zakat anyway, okay. And this was to establish, um, you know, uh, this good system of sadqa jariya and this tarbiya within the children, you know, who did have more than the nisab level, alhamdulillah. So if you can establish this, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's a beautiful practice, uh, sort of nevertheless, okay. And uh, another thing which we must adhere to is the person who pays zakat must have more than the nisab level uh, with respect to their own personal wealth. Okay, so um, let's say again, you know, nisab level is around about three hundred pounds. Um, they must own equal to or beyond the nisab level. Okay, whether that's in personal assets, um, whether it's you know in silver, fida, whether it's in dhahab, but that has a different um, uh, nisab level, which I'll explain. Uh, later stage in this video, um, or whether it's you know with respect to all old stock that they have you know pertaining to their business, so they must ensure that they have more than the nisab level for for zakat to be obligatory upon them to pay to the poor and the destitute. Okay, so that's another thing that we must be aware of, and the other thing which we must uh, sort of uh, uh, you know um, be satisfied with that is we've owned this asset or this you know wealth which is beyond the nisab level. And we must have owned it more than uh, a year. Okay, and when, we, when we refer to year in fiqh, we're actually referring to a lunar year, which is around about 10 days less than the solar year, which we're used to on the Gregorian calendar. Okay, so we must have owned it for completely a year. I know a lot of you might be thinking, what if I own something for 354 days? Uh, you know, let's say I earned 10,000 pounds for 354 days, but before the year actually finished, I lost that 10,000 pounds. Do I have to pay zakat upon it? In the strict legal sense, no. No zakat will be payable upon that because hold, which is the period of time, uh, it, is, it is set at 12 months and we must ensure that those 12 months are covered before that payment can be made. Okay, And we must uh, also be aware that there is no zakat upon somebody who is uh, a minor, as I mentioned, uh, you know, somebody who hasn't reached, uh, reached the age of majority according to a strict legal sense. All right? uh, there's no zakat on somebody who's an insane person or somebody who doesn't have uh, you know, you know the me mental faculties on in order, and also somebody who's a muqatib. Okay, when we refer to muqatib, we're referring to a muqatib slave. So somebody who is uh, um, somebody who has contracted with their master to purchase their freedom. Okay, so they'll work for their master for you know x amount of hours a day, and then one or two hours a day they will say, look, you know, I can, they would have contracted with their master that I can work elsewhere to earn money, and then eventually purchase my freedom at a rate agreed with by the master. Of course, uh, slavery is something which is almost, you know, finished in this day and age. It's very difficult unless you go to certain parts of Africa. But nevertheless, as students of knowledge, 
and students of fiqh and it is a great source of barakah in this learning that you should know this uh, you know that this is the rule pertaining to slaves and muqatib slaves inshallah Aziz. okay so just a little bit more elaboration and elucidation on what exactly is the nisab level i know i've said it's around about 300 pounds uh, in, in 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 ramadan of 2014 I think the sub level was sitting around about 346 pounds when I checked it. And there's a great website for you to check it. It does actually fluctuate at uh, um, e, e as in e for echo dash nisab dot com. Okay, and if you Google that, you'll find it, you know, it'll give you all the rates with respect to gold, silver, and things like this. It's good to keep on top of. Okay, uh, it does fluctuate in, in accordance to, you know, the rates of gold and silver. Um, the ulama. According to the books of fiqh, they have taken the nisab level, which is around about 300 pounds. It's in accordance to the uh, rate upon silver. Okay. Now, if you own, um, you know, anything from 625 grams of silver onwards, you've hit the nisab level. Okay. The nisab level for silver being 625 grams. So when I'm referring to this rate, around about 300 pounds, they base it on this value of silver. Okay. So um, uh, 625 grams at that rate or above which is around about 62.5 dollars for um, you know you know people who understand it in that way okay uh, whoever you know if you don't if you're not familiar with grams then you're more familiar with dollar then 65 uh, sorry 62.5 dollars uh, which is, which is the equivalent of 625 grams of silver so that's what the ulama base it upon of course the uh, nisab level for gold is much higher which works at around about 87.5 grams of gold um, that, that, that that refers to uh, or the the uh, sort of uh, equivalent for that is around about seven and a half dollars okay which is a lot more value but the ulama say for the sake of giving money um, and, and you know assisting the poor and destitute around the world they take the lower figure and the lower figure is that figure of the silver because 625 grams of silver is worth far less than 87.5 grams of gold uh, you know, you can base it on the higher amount if you wanted to, but if everybody did that, then there would be no zakat, okay? Uh, if everybody did do that, there would be a, you know, a significant um, sort of, um, there would be a, a significant decrease in the amount of zakat that everybody gives. And in turn, you know, it's the uh, poor and the destitute who suffer. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has given us, you know, for those who are able to give zakat, Allah has given a lot to them. And, and, and it's a great source of blessing. And similarly, we should make efforts to use the lower nisab level, which is the nisab of gold, sorry, silver, the nisab of fida, which is the nisab of silver, and we should attempt to give zakat for the sake of the poor and the destitute. And alhamdulillah, if I just give you one small figure, and I'll close off uh, this particular chapter. Um, zakat, with respect to giving um, on 5,000 pounds, okay? Imagine you had 5,000 pounds worth of, um, uh, uh, you know, cash. The zakat on that at 2.5 percent actually only works out at 125 pounds it's a very miserly figure okay on 5,000 pounds okay people you know get very worried and they get worked up you know oh my god 2.5 percent but actually if you do the math it actually doesn't work out as much at all and then you know this is uh, with respect to uh, uh, you know um, you know cash that you might have lying about okay so if you take the lower level of nisab which is around about the 300 uh, uh, pound rate Inshallah, Aziz, you won't see much difference. And you know, there's actually a hadith of the Prophet you know, uh, giving zakat in the way of Allah, it doesn't actually increase, so it decrease in your wealth. And we already made mention that zakat actually means to increase. The definition, it means to increase or to purify or to cleanse. Okay, and this is the barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such systems that he's established, you know, for the sake of the poor and the destitute. And you know, there'll be a time that comes towards the day of judgment that the Prophet sallallahu said, you know, everybody will be wealthy and it will be difficult to extinguish this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this obligation that we've got of zakat because people will reject it, people will have wealth, people will be wealthy and there will be no need of your zakat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in that we can perform this obligation and may Allah give us the ability to perform it with happiness and perform it in the way that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala performed it.